Breaking news from Southwest Houston on this Sunday. A one-year-old boy is in critical condition after a drive-by shooting. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Abrams. The mother claims the child was shot as they were walking home from a nearby store. ABC 13 reporter Roxy Bustamante joins us live with the latest on this early investigation. Roxy. Tom, Houston police asking the community for help. They want to know who exactly did this and what led up to the shooting. Here's what we know so far. Houston police say they got a call about a drive by shooting around 9 a.m. Sunday morning near Renwick Drive. Officers say a mother claims she was walking home from a nearby store with her one year old child when she heard gunshots. When the pair made it back to the apartment complex, the mother noticed she had blood on her and initially thought she was shot, according to police. Then she realized her son was the one injured. The child was rushed to the hospital and is in critical condition. We don't have any information. Uh, we just know that the child has been shot uh, in the abdomen and we're asking for prayers for the family. Uh, we're looking for some time to re resolve, but we are asking for help in trying to figure out who did this, what happened. It's just sick to my stomach. Uh, two days ago, I was in the office um, about another child there that was unattended and that somebody needed to do something and, you know, uh, it fell on deaf ears. Um, I just pray and hope that that kid is going to make it. Um, and that's, I mean, there, there's a lot of people that are really shook up right now. Now, the mother claims that she saw a black sedan in the area during the time when she heard those gunshots. Anyone with information is asked to call Houston police. Reporting live, Roxy Bustamante, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Roxy. This is the second shooting in which a child was hurt this weekend. Last night, we brought you breaking news about a four-year-old girl who was shot in the leg in a drive-by in southeast Houston. Police say a woman was also shot and a man was grazed. They are all expected to be okay. All right, now let's take a look at our weather on this Sunday. We have seen some showers across our area. Here's a live look at downtown through our memorial camera. Skies are blue again, but there are some raindrops on the lens. We could see more rain as the front moves in tonight, too. Chief Meteorologist Travis Herzog with us on this Sunday to tell us just how cold it will get once that front moves through. Travis? Tom, it's not the strongest cold front we have seen so far this season, but it will bring a noticeable drop in the temperatures going from the 80s, like we had this afternoon, to the 50s overnight. And that front is just now entering southeast Texas. All the rain that's been developing has been well ahead of the actual front, and we're still seeing a few scattered showers in the east of side of Houston, and then a few more down into our coastal counties as that front continues to press into our moist environment. We will likely see a few more scattered showers pop up. So if you missed out on the rain and we're hoping for some, you can still have a chance to get some rain this evening at 40%. Now temperatures are expected to fall down into the 50s just about everywhere except right along the upper Texas coastline. And here's how we get from here to there. Temperatures are still in the 70s. We'll be in the upper 60s at 8. And by the time we get towards sunrise, we fall to the 50s. The highest rain chance comes between about 7 and 9 p.m. And we'll keep track in the radar for you. Travis, thank you. Well, the Supreme Court could rule on the new abortion ban in Texas as early as tomorrow. The court posted on its website the justices are planning to issue at least one opinion Monday. Now, this would be the first decision of its new term, but there is no guarantee the two cases involving the Texas law will be resolved then. The Texas law bans abortion essentially once a fetal heartbeat is detected. It happens at roughly six weeks, which is before many women know they are pregnant. As we await the Supreme Court's decision, a newly released ABC News Washington Post poll reveals that 58% of Americans strongly oppose state laws which make it harder for abortion clinics to operate. The Texas law allows private citizens to sue those providing or assisting with abortions, and the poll shows that two-thirds of Americans think the Supreme Court should reject the law, including nearly a third of those who otherwise support additional state restrictions on abortions. Well, don't expect to see President Joe Biden join Democratic gubernatorial candidate Beto O'Rourke on the campaign trail here in Texas. This campaign in Texas is not going to be about Joe Biden. It's not going to be about Donald Trump. It's not going to be about anyone from outside of our state. This is going to be about the people of Texas and what the people of Texas want. O'Rourke told CNN he is pushing a message of nonpartisan unity and does not need outside help. It's likely also a reflection of the president's sluggish approval ratings and unpopularity in Texas. The campaign team for incumbent Governor Greg Abbott released a statement to ABC 13 Friday, reading in part, quote, the last thing Texans need is President Biden's radical liberal agenda coming to Texas under the guise of Beto O'Rourke. Closing arguments are set to begin tomorrow in the trial of three men charged with the murder of Ahmaud Arbery. 
The defense is expected to argue Travis McMichael, his father Gregory, and their neighbor William Roddy Bryan were trying to make a citizen's arrest when they chased and shot Arbery in Georgia last year. Prosecutors say the men were wrong in their belief that Arbery was a thief. Closing arguments are expected to take the whole day. The jury will likely receive the case on Tuesday. Well, the community is coming together for three young children whose parents and six-year-old sibling were shot to death inside their apartment over the summer. Their 10-year-old daughter played dead to save her own life, and ABC 13's Brooke Taylor is live in Southeast Houston with more. Brooke? Tom, I spoke with the grandmother of those three surviving children. She has custody of them. She tells me she's touched how the community and local bike clubs have come together to support that family. Now, right now, they're hosting a Thanksgiving meal inside the sports club right here to really show those children that they are surrounded by love, especially so close to a holiday that's all about family. Back in July, a mother, father, and their six-year-old daughter were shot and killed inside their apartment on Fondren Road pictures of them seen at the Thanksgiving event in honor of them. Donyavia Lagway, 35-year-old Gregory Carhi, and their daughter Harmony Carhi all died. The couple's 10-year-old daughter also shot and FaceTimed her grandmother for help. She told police she played dead. That 10-year-old is one of three surviving children who now live with their grandmother. Over 20 social clubs and motorcycle groups put on the Thanksgiving meal to make sure these children knew they were surrounded by love. I spoke with the grandmother who says she replays that day over and over, but tries to take it one day at a time. And she basically, I mean, you know, she let me see what was going on. That's what she called me, you know, she has said, Granny, my mom got shot, my dad got shot, and I got shot in the arm. And I mean, all I can do, you know, is just, you know, just fall to my knees. It hurts so bad, you know, knowing that, you know, that I would never get my daughter and my grandbaby back. And Xavier David has been charged with three counts of capital murder. The grandmother tells me she doesn't know whether her daughter and her grandchildren's father knew that man. We are live in Southeast Houston. I'm Brooke Taylor, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Brooke. Well, we know times are tough right now for many families, but the Citywide Club of Houston is asking for your help to put on the 43rd annual Super Feast on Thanksgiving Day. The Citywide Club is holding a super turkey food drive from 7 to 7 tomorrow. They're looking for donations of frozen turkeys, non-perishable items, and canned goods. You can drop off those items either at the George R. Brown Convention Center downtown or other locations in Conroe, Spring, or Sugarland. You can find more information about that at the citywideclub.com.